Okay, talking about the fifth precept, I've read the precepts a little different from the other four. Re read this precept is a little different from the other four, which are always bad and always have bad nature and consequences. They say, they say the bad is when we take the drug and become careless, which will lead the person to violate the other precepts. It almost sounds like it is okay to take drugs and drink alcohol if you're advanced enough to control yourself and not violate, violate any of the other precepts. But is it possible to become so advanced that intoxicants don't have effect on you, or even if they affect you, you're able to fully control yourself? Well, this precept is different from the other four. That, there, there's no question about that. That has to be admitted, that it isn't directly harming another person. And it isn't an act um, in the same way that the other ones are. Because it's not the act of drinking that is 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 uh, is unethical. It's really the intention to intoxicate yourself, right? So, the first thing I would say is that uh, I disagree with this interpretation of the fifth one. The the grammar doesn't really uh, allow for it, unless you want to be tricky and and try to break it up and and and. Um, and pretend that that's what it says. It's not what it says. It says, Surah and Meraya uh, and Majja are a, or Surah and Meraya are, 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 are things that are Majja and Pamadatana. They are things which are a basis for intoxication. It's not saying, take them to the extent that you become intoxicated. That's not what it says. And that it can't be read to say that. Tana means base or, or foundation or it means a place really. Tana, but, but it's used uh, metaphorically to refer to a base or, or something that um, something anyway. There are things that are their bases for, for negligence. Um, and this is why, as I said, people get the idea that any base of negligence, any base of bamada, which is the opposite of apamada, is breaking the fifth precept. But it's not. Um, I mean, it depends. The other thing to note is that the precepts are not commandments. And this is what people fail to understand. I'm, I'm trying to say many things at once here, but I'll try to try to keep it in order. Let's try to get a, um, try to get order this. When I, I was trying to explain this this idea that the fifth precept is only specifically dealing with al drugs and alcohol to people who are trying to tell me that it was um, it was in it was inclusive including uh, gambling as I said you know, the, the, I said I asked them what is the first precept and they said uh, ham ham kasa which means uh, don't kill animals, or you are forbidden. Basically, ham means to means you are forbidden, but colloquial, it mean, coll colloquially it means don't. But the word itself means you are forbidden to. I forbid you to something like that. Uh, yeah, the, the the Buddha forbids you, or the precept forbids you to do that. And I said wrong. <laughs> And they all, what's this crazy Falang talking about? Oh no, they, 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 they had faith in me, but it was, you know, what, what's he getting at? He's, he's getting clever here. And I said, anyone, anyone? Ham, ham, tachivit. You know, they had all these different ways. Don't, uh, don't stop life. You're forbidden to, to cut life, tachivit. So they had different interpretations, and I said, no, wrong. And they're like, uh, wrong, wrong. And I said, no, the, the precepts are not f commandments. They're not forbidding anything. The precepts, and it's clear from the writing that people forget all the time, I undertake to refrain from these things. So you can undertake to refrain from anything. Uh, you could undertake to refrain from coffee. I undertake to refrain from coffee. There, you've got a new precept, a new sixth precept, if you like, or... I undertake to refrain from X, Y, Z. I undertake to refrain from beating up my younger brother. Well, it's not one of the five precepts, but I'm going to undertake it as a precept. Good for you. It's a good thing. Better not to beat up your little brother. So, um, it's important to understand what the precepts are that 
um, they are a determination not to do something. And so the fifth precept is a determination not to take drugs and alcohol. Be and you could under interpret it as and other things which are similar basis of intoxication. Uh, manja, uh, sura, meriya, manja, pamadathana the things which are a basis for negligence, in the same way that alcohol is. So not gam not in the way that gambling is. If you want to take a precept against gambling, power to you. I don't think the fifth precept, as it's traditionally understood, is, um, is that sort of determination. I think a person who, who breaks that, who, who does gamble, is, is in for trouble, but um, you know, they're not violating that precept if they've taken this determination that I'm not going to take drugs and alcohol. Well, I don't think gambling is going to break that determination because it's on a whole different level. Uh, gambling, I think, is uh, it's not nearly as deleterious, uh, detrimental to, as uh, as uh, taking drugs and alcohol. This is this is one thing. Um, so the, the, how that relates to your question is that well, well that, that basically the, the, I disagree with this interpretation the idea that don't take them in, to the extent that they lead to negligence I mean, the, the point that they're raising is that negligence is the real problem not the drugs and alcohol but you're taking, these, you're taking this vow because uh, because you understand that they are bases of negligence and Anyone who's practiced meditation and then gone back and, and taken drugs or alcohol will tell you that even the smallest, I mean, if you take enough that it's not going to intoxicate you, then you're not taking, um, you're not taking enough to break the precept. As soon as you take even a small amount of, of any intoxicant, you become a little bit intoxicated, and it does affect your brain. It affects your ability to think clearly, to think rationally it has an effect on, on your mind. Now, as Matt said, uh, in answer to your question, what's the point? And that's another important point to make, is that the very intention to take drugs and alcohol is a negative one. The very intention to to imbibe poison, what is something that is actually going to poison your body and affect your, your ability to of the mind to function, is uh, a negative intention in the first place. An, an enlightened being would never uh, give rise to such an intention. Why would they need to take drugs or alcohol? And the 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 implication, moreover, is that they would they would abstain from it because of the very nature of it. This is something that poisons the body. It's it's like, or it's something that poisons the mind as well. It's something that is done for the purpose of escaping. The, the idea that an enlightened being could drink alcohol, um, one monk was trying to tell me that, that a sotapanna, because a sotapanna apparently keeps all the precepts f fully intact, will never break any one of the five precepts. He said, it will never reach their lips. It will magically. He said, "There's, there'll always something will happen that it can't, it can't go into their mouth." He was telling me because um, these, I was in this Cambodian monastery, and these lay people had brought this rice, this sweet rice, and I've never had it since. Uh, I've never been presented with it since, and it was sweet rice. And I was, oh, nice! And so I started eating it, and I said, "There's alcohol in this." And the other monks, no, no, no. And the lay people were right there, and they were like getting a little bit worried. And I said, no, there's alcohol in it. I was a young monk, so I didn't think to be a little bit tactful about it. I said, no, there's alcohol in this. And the lay people were like, oh, because they had brought this rice. And they said, no, 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 there's no alcohol. And they're, so they're, they're, we're arguing. And I said, look. And so I took a little bit more, and I was like, look, how do they make this rice? And I said, well, and he said, well, they put sugar in the rice and, and whatever, milk or whatever. No, not milk, but I think just sugar and rice. And then they put it out in the sun. <laughs> and it's like, this is alcohol. That's how you make alcohol. And, uh, and then I got the, I think I got the lay people really upset. And then the monk told me, he said, oh yes, you know, a soda pan would never, it would never touch their lips kind of thing. He's, he was saying, I don't eat that stuff, and uh, it's not that I think it's against the precepts, but I just naturally don't. 
believe me, he wasn't a Sotapanna. But, uh, I think he, maybe he thought he was. Um, so, so the idea, an arahant, enlightened being, might take alcohol. I don't know. I'm not going to. I'm not going to argue that they that it couldn't happen that you could pry their lips open and force them to drink it. But to me, the idea that they would do so is to, would do something so absurd as to drink poison, um, you know, especially poison that affects your your mental clarity. To me, it, it's a uh, it's an impossibility. It doesn't quite exactly answer your question. So your your question is whether it might not have an effect on them. Well, it wouldn't. An enlightened being, if they did drink alcohol, it wouldn't have an effect on their uh, their ability to to understand, or it wouldn't have an effect on their understanding uh, of reality. They would still, the, the mind would become clouded, but the cloudiness would be, um, you know, simply a cloudy mind. There would be no judging of it. It would Im be impossible for them to give rise to liking or disliking. Their mind would, um, their, the, 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 the mind would si still have a one-to-one -one relationship, because the mind has at that point given up all partiality. It's given up a such a... a uh, a great portion of the of existence, which is the negative, unwholesome portion of existence, it can't arise again. So their mind will be cloudy, but it'll just be cloudy, and that's if it could happen at all. And as I said, some people say it could never happen, but who knows?